Dead Rising 3, the game that started the downfall of the Dead Rising franchise, at least in my opinion. Dead Rising 3 can be fun though, and it does have co-op just like the second game and off the record, but unfortunately Dead Rising 3 had all the warning signs of what's to come in the fourth game, where in this game, this is, this is kind of where Dead Rising started to lose its details, its charm, its identity, and its difficulty. Not to mention, this game is kind of pay to win, but we'll get into that in a minute. Now this is the first time I actually had to make a separate category for some issues. Now, all these issues that I'm about to list are not a thing on the Xbox version of the game because well the game was just basically made for Xbox one and then that's it like um, I don't I'm pretty sure it's not on PlayStation and the PC version is just a terrible console port and by console port I mean Xbox port so some major issues tend to happen when you don't put effort into a console port but the first thing i want to talk about is this game's performance it's terrible it's awful it's locked to 30 frames per second by default on pc which is a problem so when you have to modify the files of the game to unlock it unlock the 30 frames per second lock and then you have to lock the game back to 60 so once you unlock it you then have to lock it again to 60 frames per second after you unlocked it from 30 and then you have to enable vsync or else the game will have flickering and it will just have problems and you'll probably get a headache trying to play the game if you don't lock it to 60 frames and you don't turn on vsync just a note you cannot play on anything higher than 60 frames per second or at least i mean you can but you will have some issues and you will have the issue that i am about to show you now i'm going to give a warning of what i'm about to show because it can cause cause like headaches or seizures maybe or possibly anything like that so skip ahead if that's like you don't want to see it uh but if you do um i'm gonna play it right now just a warning there's a lot of flickering and a lot of bouncing around on the screen and it's kind of hard to see what's going on and it might give you a headache any survivors will probably be on deck and they might be injured hurry let me know when you get there on my way So that's the first major issue of the game. So you already have to do that before you play, unless you want to play 30 frames per second. Uh, not to mention though, it's still not right. If you're going to play the game on mouse and keyboard, it's still not right. You still have to modify modify the files even more to turn off mouse acceleration and smoothing or else the mouse movement is going to be weird and it's going to feel off and it's going to feel terrible and you have to do all that before you play the game um so if you're going to use mouse and keyboard and you're going to play higher than 30 frames per second you have to make all those changes in the files with your own file and if you're going to play with a controller though and you're going to play at 30 frames per second uh on pc then then you're not going to really have those problems because you're just going to have a console-like experience, but on PC. The next major issue, well, it's not really a major issue, it's just a uh, kind of annoyance more than like an actual issue because you can still play the game just fine with this issue, but there's also a lot of pop-in for some reason. I have this game on the highest possible settings, and still sometimes the textures, they look like mashed potatoes or Play-Doh. And then like three seconds later, after I'm already like on top of the textures or I see the textures for, I see the mashed potatoes for like three seconds and then the textures finally load in. I don't know why that happens, but it happened at least 20 times and it just happens just a ton of times when I'm playing the game. It's just random things. Even the road sometimes will just like, it'll just look like mush and then the textures will load in. It literally has no texture. It just looks like mush. And then on top of that, this game has more crashes than any other Dead Rising game. I'm just going to point that out right now. Like, I've never 
At least when I was playing the first game, the second game, and off the record, I never once crash, and I have hours and hours of gameplay on those games, and they've never once crashed on me. And then this game, within a few hours, it immediately crashed. Luckily, this game, this particular game, has an autosave feature, and you can save at any time, and you don't have to get to a bathroom to save, uh, which is... You know, it's kind of weird having that in a Dead Rising game, but then again, the game crashes all the time, so I'm actually glad that the new save system, it auto-saves, uh, otherwise, like, you'd lose a ton of progress, because it just, the game crashes. And, uh, I, all I have to say is all these issues are probably, most likely, because it's a terrible console port. Dead Rising 3, the first detail that is missing in this game, and I want to talk about because it's part of the gameplay, and I've used it in the first game and the second game, and that is the hunks of meat. There are hunks of meat in the first game and the second game, and you can get them, and they were actually quite useful when you picked them up, at least for zombies, not really people, but you can pick up the hunks of meat, or they're, they're really just chopped off hands, or, uh, legs I think it's mostly hands though uh, chopped off hands and you just you pick them up and you throw them and then the zombies get distracted and they go towards that hunk of meat and try to eat the hunk of meat and they ignore you for a few seconds but in this game the hunk of meat does absolutely nothing it, it makes it completely pointless and the hunk of meat does not well, it doesn't do anything. When you throw the hunk of meat, the zombies don't go towards the hunk of meat. They just completely ignore the hunk of meat like it's not a hunk of meat. And it only works after you put a dynamite stick on the hunk of meat. So I guess the zombies don't care about hunks of meat. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that word again, but they don't care about that. I guess the zombies only want to chase it because it, there's a dynamite stick. I guess dynamite sticks are now delicious to these zombies. I don't know why that's a thing, but they just don't care about the hunks of meat and they only care about the dynamite. Oh, also, you can do this in, in this game. Boom. See that? They go towards the meat. They go towards the meat. It doesn't that that doesn't happen in the fourth game all right so I'm gonna show you guys the thing right now we're gonna go into this weapons locker which may or may not work who knows we're gonna find the hunk of meat here right there there it is we're gonna grab the hunk of meat I have a hunk of meat right now we're gonna jump off this balcony boom break our ankles right away uh, we got to find a bunch of zombies here I forget there's a different throwing button in this game which is weird. Alright, so we have a bunch of zombies here, right? They're all crowding us, okay? We're about to throw this hunk of meat, which in the second game and the first game they run towards. And we're gonna throw the hunk of meat. It's a zombie in the face. Look at that. No zombies, not a single zombie are going for that hunk of meat. They all just ignore the hunk of meat. So we'll go, we'll go over here, jump over them. We'll grab that hunk of meat. Oh, get off me, zombie. We'll grab that hunk of meat real quick. Boom. Boom, there we go, we got the hunk of meat. And then we'll throw it one more time, boom. Throw the hunk of meat. Boom, absolutely nothing. The hunk of meat is absolutely 100% useless. Next, I wanna get into the DLC, or I think it's actually just part of the game now. I'm not actually, I mean, it's still called DLC, but since when you buy the game, when you're buying it, you, you buy the Apocalypse Edition, which has all the DLC, and I think you can only buy the Apocalypse Edition with all the DLC. Or at least when I went to buy the game, the only thing that existed was the Apocalypse Edition, and it's only like $6, so, you know, why buy the Standard Edition if you can get the Apocalypse Edition? So you're going to get the DLC weapons when you buy the game. But, on top of that, when you buy, or when you have the DLC weapons, when you unlock a safe house for the first time, just the first safe house, you can use a weapons locker, and you immediately unlock all the DLC weapons, and you can just grab any DLC weapon that you want, and just stack them up, fill your whole inventory with them, and you're, you're basically just super powerful, you can destroy anything in your path, a psychopath shows up, Oh well, they don't stand a chance. Unless it's the one psychopath, the like doctor guy that takes your weapons, 
The other psychopaths don't even stand a chance because you just use that same weapon over and over again and you have like five of them and like a minigun or the exploding assault rifle, whatever it's called, you can just destroy them and they don't even stand a chance. So technically, technically, the DLCs are kind of pay to win, even though it, even though it's a PvE game and the weapons are kind of cool, the DLC weapons just make the game way too easy. Not to mention that the Psychos are not really as interesting in this game as they are in the previous games in my opinion, or as hard to beat to begin with. Like, they're just, they're not even as hard to beat to begin with without the DLC weapons, but then you add in the DLC weapons, and then you can just completely demolish them, and that takes the little fun that there could have been fighting them just completely away during the fight. And also, on top of that, at the 7 hour mark, I'm a... At the, well, at the 7 hour mark uh, in the game, I only had like 5 boss fights, and 2 of them were optional, but they still do have intros like the previous games, so that's a plus, but literally 5 boss fights, with 2 of them being completely optional, uh, whereas like the other 3 were just, you just fight them just doing the story missions. Enter Grasshopper. Find sanctuary in peaceful garden. Holy shit. Did zombies get in? Are you okay? Sweet anger coursed through us. Is how universe tell us who target should be. Look, you know, just because you're talking all funny like that, it doesn't mean it's making any sense. Spirit of universe has slaughtered my happiness. And so, I must slaughter too. All who disrupt my garden of peace shall die! Oh God, you did this. These people were just looking for safety. You'd no right to kill them. You shall perish like the others. Also, not all the psychos give you something special, whereas in the first two Dead Rising games, uh, defeating a psychopath would gain you something, usually their weapon, or, you know, whatever they were attacking you with is usually what you got to pick up whenever you defeated them, uh, most of the time. Uh, sometimes, there was like, there's very few times, uh, where, in the first game and the second game, where you actually didn't get something, but, in the third game, you don't really get anything like I think only two two out of the five bosses that I fought I think there's only seven psychos in the entire game, but um, Only two that out of out of five gave me anything so uh, One gave me a blueprint for a combo vehicle, which was like the uh, motorcycle combo vehicle thing which is which is cool and the other one dropped their weapon which don't get me wrong both of those things were like kind of cool, but not every boss had something which is lacking compared to the previous games where almost every boss had something and on top of that there were more psychos to fight. On top of that, I also think that the first game and the second game just had more interesting and more the psycho pass in, in those games just had more personality to them. <laughs> Another thing that I think is bad, even though I'm pretty sure it was supposed to make the game better or at least more fun when they added it, or at least that's what I'm assuming is the reason that they added it, but the weapons locker in my opinion is just stupid. It makes the game way too easy, like you can already craft tons of combo weapons at any time, like you can just pick up two random things and then make some sort of combo weapon because you don't even have to have like the actual item as long as it's an item in that category you combine it with another item in a different category and you can make something like just 
everything is used to make something for the most part and you can craft them at any time you don't need a workbench you can just pick up two things and then craft something right away so it, it makes the weapons locker just kind of stupid pointless and it takes even more fun out of the game because you can just craft something that's super powerful and then go to a weapons locker and then get like five of them after you just crafted one of them and then again once you get these super powerful weapons and then you stack five of them you're you're just kind of unstoppable not nothing can really stop you no, not a psychopath not zombies and you're just killing everything in sight In Dead Rising 3, survivors also got downgraded, but also improved in this game. Which is a weird thing to say, to be honest, but saving survivors is downgraded. Like, you see someone, they're always surrounded by zombies, you kill the zombies next to them, and then they're like, Thanks for helping me, I can take care of myself. And then they just run away into a bigger pack of zombies, and then they just disappear. They just completely delete themselves from the game. And so that that part's pretty basic. There's no more like saving a survivor and then escorting escorting them back to a safe house like the previous games. You sure took your thing. Oh my god. All right, thanks. I'm gone, pal. I'll take my chances on my own, but thanks for your help. Then, there are a different type of survivors, which I would like to call still useless, but not as much useless as the survivors that just run away and disappear. But, uh, they mo- and, the, and they also mostly, like, you find these other kind of survivors, and they either end up either themselves, or, uh, actually, I can't even, I can't even say that on YouTube. I'm gonna have to just, uh, I'm gonna have to mute that word because that's a bad word on YouTube. Uh, but they either do that, or they, they want to, and then you end up, like, saving or doing something, and by that, I mean you just, you end up, like, bringing them an item or something, and then they're just like, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna live the rest of my life as, like, your sidekick or something, like, I'm Robin and you're Batman, and then they will follow you around and kill some zombies, but they're pretty much useless, too, as they usually just get in your way all the time or they just end up dying and they're kind of pointless especially if you're playing co-op with a friend or a random then they're even more pointless the combat has improved a bit in in the third game in my opinion there is light attacks heavy attacks uh, and you can throw your weapons basically with any weapon you can either throw it do a light attack or do a heavy attack and there's also combo attacks and there's like some hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat attacks and stuff kind of like the first and second game and there's just a ton more combo weapons lots of them are really cool there are also a ton of combo vehicles like in the second game it introduced like the idea of combo vehicles with like the chainsaw on the bike and stuff the chainsaw bike but it was expanded upon in this game so you can combine two vehicles to make a stronger combo vehicle which is also awesome
There's also a skill tree now that you can choose what to get when you level up instead of it choosing for you like the previous games when you level up it would just give you something automatically based on your level but in this game you can decide what things you want to upgrade first like if you want more inventory size you can put your points into that if you want more health you can put your points into that. Uh, agility you want more agility and put your points into that all that kind of stuff also speaking of agility though this game finally fixes slash changes the slow movement speed and it doesn't feel as slow in this game I just don't feel as slow in this game and you can actually sprint you can actually sprint in this game but on that note, on the combat note, uh, because of all the combo weapons and the ability to craft a combo weapon with pretty much anything at any time, it kind of gets rid of that feeling that the first two games had where you were using everyday items and just random items that you find to fight off zombies. And now you're mostly just going to be using combo weapons and uh, trust me, a lot of the combo weapons don't even really make sense, but you know, some of them are cool so I'm okay with it but since it's easy to craft them and fill your inventory up with just super powerful combo weapons you're not really going to be out using a bunch of random everyday items and it just there just also seems to be guns all over the place and it just kind of gets rid of that that feel and that just that part of the Dead Rising franchise that I liked I like the the like you don't really have weapons for like a zombie apocalypse and you have to kind of craft your own weapons and you're just using everyday items to fight off zombies like in the first game it was just like you know you just, you just pick something out of a store and boom you're fighting some zombies with that thing and it's just that was uh that's just cool that's like one of my favorite parts about dead rising you just go into a store and you can use the items that's in that store to fight off some zombies there are a lot of side missions in this game. They seem to be all over the place and almost if not all of them are fetch quests. It's mostly go get this thing for this person. Probably multiple things. It's usually like two things to be to be exact or five things for some reason. It's either like you need to get uh, two different items or five of the same item and then you bring them back and then boom you're done. That's the mission. It's not very exciting. But there is a ton of missions like that for some reason. The map also in Dead Rising 3, it's big and it's the second biggest map, I think. I think it's the second biggest map. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the fourth map is the game with the biggest map. And then the third game has the second biggest map. But I could be maybe a little bit wrong. But I actually, I kind of like Dead Rising 3's map. Um, there is four different sections each with their own unique look and feel and it's kind of fun to explore the map But my one criticism is I feel there could be more buildings that are open and there is also a severe lack of a mall I mean, I guess they have like one of the sections is, is supposed to be a, sh uh, a Shopping center. I almost messed up my words there, but a shopping center part of the map but there should have been a giant mall in one of the sections to explore and have a bunch of stores and an open mall. Can you imagine that? Because there's no loading screens when you go into, uh, in or out of buildings in this game. So just like have a giant mall somewhere in the map that you can just walk into the front door and explore the map and there's no loading screens as you go from... Uh, in the city into the mall out of the mall into the city and like you can even maybe drive some vehicles Into like some motorcycles or something in the mall and drive them around and stuff like that. That would be fun That that would be fun, but there was no mall there was no mall in the third game and I'm a little disappointed in that and uh you know, maybe tossing some psychos in the mall too. Like there could have been some chances for that. And of course, of course, we can't forget what they should have had. They should have had some of that classic Dead Rising mall music. But no, that's not in the game either. There, in fact, there is no classic Dead Rising music in this game. There's no mall music. How disappointing. This game also was the first game to kind of get rid of the time mechanic. I mean, technically, technically, the time mechanic is still in the game if you play on nightmare mode, but in normal mode, the time limit isn't really a thing. I mean, there technically is a 
a timer with days and stuff, but it doesn't go down unless you complete missions uh, for at least from what I've seen, it doesn't go down unless you complete missing missions. So this this game basically was the first step into getting rid of the timer mechanic and the saving in the toilets. Uh, because that's not really, I mean in nightmare mode you still have to save uh, in, in bathrooms, but um, in, in normal mode, in normal mode you don't have a time limit, nor do you have to save in a bathroom. You can save at any time, which is... Both of those things were probably more warning signs for what was going to be coming in the fourth game. Now one last final thing about the gameplay in Dead Rising 3 is there are a ton more zombies. Like the game says that it can handle three times as many zombies on screen as the previous games could and that is 100% true. There are literally so many zombies all over the place to kill. And it's great that there are a ton of zombies, but there kind of also has to be a ton of zombies since the combo weapons that you use and the DLC weapons are so overpowered if there wasn't this many zombies, it would just be even more easy of a game. On top of that though, since it was the it was supposed to be like a next gen game, there aren't really there are only two loading screens. Um, well, actually, there's there's probably more because there's some hidden ones when it switches uh, from gameplay to a cutscene. But um, the the main loading screens in the game are when you first start the game, the main menu, and then loading into the game, which take forever, by the way. Uh, but when you're actually in the game and you're exploring the city and doing missions, there aren't really any loading screens. But when you start the game. Uh, it literally takes like I don't even know how long to actually get into the game But once you're in the game, there's no loading screens Dead Rising 3 takes place in 2021, which now that I think about it is uh, almost perfect, the perfect year for it to take place. Uh, maybe 2020 would have been better, but 2021, that's pretty close. But anyways, 10 years after the events of Fortune, or yeah, Fortune City outbreak, and 15 years after the uh, Willamette outbreak is when Dead Rising 3 takes place, and the story follows a young mechanic named Nick Ramos and his attempt to survive a massive zombie outbreak in a fictional city of Los Perdidos, or at least that's how I think you say it, uh, California. The game begins three days after the initial outbreak after returning from a failed uh, mission where Nick would try to search for supplies. Nick reunites with some of the other survivors at a diner, including his boss, Rhonda. These zombies end up breaking into the diner because two idiots were allowed to stay in there for some reason. Like, I don't know how these people survive for three days, let alone five minutes, but uh, I don't usually like to show spoilers for any reason, but I'm just going to show some in this video. Uh, like usually I don't show them in any video whatsoever, but just a heads up, I'm about to show some spoilers, uh, in the rest of the video probably, so just a warning, but I mean the game has been out for years. As long as they're outside, we got nothing to worry about. Oh, no, turn it off, turn it off! <laughs> Oh, 
You serious? After the zombies break into the diner and kill Peter and his mother because they were both kind of stupid to be honest, Annie runs back into her own group of survivors. Apparently, somehow she makes it past all the zombies. I will never know how she makes it past all these zombies, but uh, apparently she does and gets to her band of survivors. But Nick and the others make it to Rhonda's auto shop and learn that the government is going to bomb the city in six days to stop the outbreak which before that happens Nick and the other survivors need to find a way out of the city and that's basically the short summary of the plot points of the story without without many spoilers honestly does it even matter if, if there are spoilers I mean this game is this game is pretty old I mean the other games are old but I just don't like sharing spoilers like just in case there's that one person that just don't know. But honestly, this is probably the game, the Dead Rising game with one of the worst stories because honestly, the story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like the characters, a lot of the characters are kind of dumb. And there's a moment where one of the survivors, like, like one of the survivors, this guy gets into the vehicle, gets into the vehicle with you you drive all the way there he somehow disappears he's nowhere to be seen and then after you fight you fight the the psychopath or something he just randomly pops into existence again in the cutscene like where were you that entire time during that fight where were you you were doing like nothing I mean, I guess I already kind of know because he's the person that, like, if you have a friend playing with you, it's the person that uh, your friend will play as, or you will play as if you play co-op. But, like, when you're playing by yourself, it's just weird that that person just kind of appears and then just disappears in some scenes. I think the game looks pretty good in my opinion. I think the graphics hold up decent. Well, that is when the when the graphics uh, load in and they they look they look all right. They also can look like mashed potatoes, but uh, I think this game looks decent. I think it looks pretty good in my opinion. They definitely went for a different tone though. Uh, so I know some people might might uh, like it more or, or less compared to the previous games, but they definitely went for a more darker, realistic look for the third game than the previous games or the fourth game. So this is probably um, the more darker, gritty, realistic looking Dead Rising game out of all of them. Literally, the only thing I want to say about this game soundtrack is that it's not really memorable and it's nowhere near as good or on the same level as the first game or even the second game. In fact, I didn't even think about the soundtrack really at all while playing this game, so that should speak for itself. And I still gotta say that the first game has the best soundtrack out of any Dead Rising game. Dead Rising 3 definitely is not a masterpiece in my opinion. I mean, it is just my opinion, but I don't think it's a masterpiece like the previous games. Although it is fun and you can have fun in the game and it's not a complete disaster like the fourth game was, but it still falls short and in my opinion, it doesn't bring as much personality, charm, and fun that the first two games did. And Dead Rising 3 is where the franchise started to lose some of its smaller details and it would lead the franchise into what is arguably the worst Dead Rising game, Dead Rising 4. So to be clear, it's not bad, but it's definitely not the best game and it is the, it's the third best game game so it's not it's not the best game it's not the second best game it's the third best game and it's also just happens to be the third game well actually uh actually i'm gonna take that back right now because uh technically off the record is the third game or you know it, it's got some other spin-offs i don't really count the spin-offs when i talk about games like that i i just do the main things but off the record is better than the third game, to be honest, in, in, in my opinion. It is so, it's actually the fourth uh, best game in the Dead Rising franchise, in my opinion. So, in my opinion, Dead Rising 
in my opinion, this is how it goes. Dead Rising 2, Dead Rising 2, or maybe Dead Rising 2 off the record. One of those two is on top. Then, then Dead Rising, and then Dead Rising 3 is just behind all of those three games. So, and then Dead Rising 4 is behind uh, Dead Rising 3. Anyways, that's all I got to say for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. I'm actually going to honestly be surprised if anyone even made it to the end. So if you did make it to the end, I want you to leave a comment down below saying, Hey, I watched the entire video, and then tell me what you think about the video. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because you want to be subscribed. And I'll see you guys next time.